With this kit, you'll be creating a beautiful mosaic that can be displayed outside if you choose. To create a mosaic that can be used outside and that withstands the element, it's a little bit more specific to do. You have to use a particular kind of underlayment or substrate. Um, you can't use inexpensive ceramic. You have to use glass that's rated for outside and an adhesive that works okay for exterior application. It's a little bit more expensive to create, but it's worth it in the long run to know that your mosaic will withstand the elements. So let me show you what's all in your mosaic kit when it arrives. I'll take a good look here. Open everything up. A little picture of what you'll be creating. Kind of helps you with a little cheat sheet, even though you have the video tutorial. Um, first of all, this fabulous substrate that I cut for you, the big triangle substrate with the hardware, hanging hardware already installed for you. Here's the star of the show, the glass. <laughs> I put them in little baggies, kind of in color progression for you there. The pieces are pre-cut, and that way it's not a big mumble-jumble mess. Um, great adhesive, perfect for exterior use. A uh, sponge with a grout float. Vinyl gloves. Um, stir stick, and sanded black grout. Everything you'll need. The only thing you would need extra would be a ruler and a pencil, and then that's for your guidelines, and then also a disposable bowl like container that you can throw away to mix your grout in. And you'll be all set and ready to go. Like I said, you have to use a special underlayment or substrate for anything that goes outside. A mosaic that it's intended to go outside can never be put on wood or MDF. Wood is an organic substance and it moves when it gets wet. And as soon as that mosaic moves, your grout will crack, moisture will get in there, and your mosaic will fail. I always say you can make a beautiful mosaic, but if it falls apart, it's not so pretty. So we're using this stuff that I call Go Board. It's a cementous backer board. It's nice and lightweight. It's foam on the middle with a thin layer of cement on either side. You cannot uh, screw into this because it's not like wood. So I've uh, gone ahead and attached the hanger for you with a washer and a nut so you're all ready to go. Take a look at some of this gorgeous glass that's included in your kit. Um, I always say what makes a beautiful mosaic is using beautiful materials. And this glass is gorgeous. Now, since it's glass, of course, it's rated okay to use outside. Um, I love this sparkly glass. Isn't this fun? And this beautiful smooth glass called pastille glass. This is all glass that is molded. Um, this glass, I love this. This will be included as well. See that all the gold veins in it really picks up the light and sparkles. And remember that in your beginner kit, I'm pre-cutting all this glass for you, so you won't need any tools. I'll cut them in the size and the shapes you need. Here's more molded glass, and I don't know if you can see how pretty this is. This is iridized, or sometimes they call it pearlized. And look how shiny it is when it picks up the light. This glass over here, I love it. It's recycled glass, and it's um, made in Turkey. It's real smooth and beautiful. Some of it actually even is pearlized as well. And I love these little triangles. They have a mirror backing, which makes them sparkle. And its counterpart is frosted, which is a nice complement to this sparkly piece. So, you're going to have fun with this beautiful glass, and like I said, Beautiful glass helps make a beautiful mosaic. Okay, well you can see I'm starting here at the top. 
because I want to make sure that that top element, the little red round circle, has plenty of room for its glue, for its adhesive. And I'm moving down my progression. You see I've got these lines on here. That's just kind of make to make sure that I don't start going sideways or collywampus. Um, using my glue, shaking it down a little bit here. Come on, get out here. That's probably about the right amount. This is a great tool to use. It's a, just a Q-tip, a cotton swab. And uh, you can see how much glue you, you need to use. Looks like I can spread it around a little bit more. I have these tiny little pieces that are next. And I know these are kind of tedious to work with, but I like to set on the sides first and then come around. You'll see that I'm setting the glass pieces, the glass tiles, at a little bit of kind of a circly angle here, at the, just at the top. I have a pencil here. It kind of helps to move things around a little bit. Get things situated where I want it. I'm going to add a little bit more glue for my next row. And that's too much glue. Spread it around. And I'm using these uh, orange pieces. You've seen, see they're cut at a little bit of an angle. That's called a keystone. And I'm not thinking about leaving room for grout. I don't want you to think that way. Trust me. Oops. Trust me, the uh, grout will find its way. So you can see I have my hot colors all set. They're all glued down. I've not thought about leaving any room for grout. That's not necessary. Grout will find its way. You'll see here at the top, I kind of am setting things a little bit of an arc. And as I go down here, that arc starts to straighten out. Here on the sides, those are the pieces that are cut at an angle for a little bit better fit. And also, each row, each course is buttered up as tightly as you can get it. You'll need to remember to do that as you're coming down and with your progression so everything fits correctly. And once again, follow those lines to make sure everything is looking even. So you've set your hot colors. Next, I want you to move down to the very bottom and start at the bottom and move to the top with your cool colors. I'll tell you why that is a little later. You'll see that I've put the, the angled pieces on the outside, and I start on, the out, on both sides and move into the inside. And this is about the right amount of glue. And you should be all set. Once again, these notched pieces will go here on the outside, like this. And then you'll move on with these pieces and move into the center. Uh, if they don't quite fit right, I'll include a little half piece in there that you can kind of use to fudge with in the middle. Um, So I'm moving along and setting my cool colors. I wanted to show you that these pieces here that have the deeper notches in them probably require a little bit more glue than the pieces that have no notches on the underside or slight notches. So uh, use a little bit more glue here for those. Uh, just to let you know that if you were to get some glue on top of your glass, don't panic about that. It's not a big deal. When we grout, the grouting will loosen up that um, glue that's on the top and you'll be able to scrape it off or it'll come off on its own real easily. Well, when it comes to these pretty frosted and uh, shiny triangles, you're going to have to set them kind of all at once. You'll see that I have cut two pieces. Uh, I've cut them in half. Uh, for the side pieces so they fit correctly. So I'm kind of arranging them um, together at the same time to make sure everything fits the way I want and once again that I'm following that straight line. I don't want it to get uh, all collywampus. I want it to go straight according to my lines. So 
looking good. Here's that piece that's cut in half, and it's going to go over on the other side. Um, so you have a nice fit. Looking good. Moving right along. So, okay, your cool colors here are all set. Now let's move back up to the top where your hot colors are and start with these transitional greens. Um, we're going to start here and kind of even this out a little bit. We have been setting sort of at a curve, and I'm going to work on trying to get this a little bit more even now. These pretty little petals will help us do that. And then we can move along to our next courses. I think we've got this pretty green is next. So we're almost finished. You can see that we've done our uh, hot colors, and then we went to our transitional greens, and then we stopped after we did these triangles. Once again on the bottom, we started cool and we worked up, and we stopped at the end of the cool colors. There's a reason for this, that, that everything must fit correctly. If you have not made all your rows nice and tight, these two pieces will not fit correctly. So. Uh, I have made my rows nice and tight, and they fit correctly. But if you're in a situation where they just won't fit, don't worry about it. You could omit one of those uh, tesserae. You could omit the, omit the long skinny one or this little pretty turquoise one. So this is what I call our kind of our adaptable row, our, our fudget row if we messed it up. So um, don't worry about it if these two pieces don't fit you can sort of adapt and modify right here. Part, you've made this beautiful mosaic, and now you get to grout it. I love it. So, I have sent you about six ounces of black sanded grout. And generally, the uh, ratio of grout to water is about six to one, so I have one and a half ounces of water here. I'm going to get ready to grout, so I have all my equipment here. I've just got the little stir sticks. Here in my studio, I save nasty old spatulas, and I use those for stirring grout as well. Got my gloves, because it will be messy. Have my little sponge with the grout float on the side. A spray bottle of water, just in case I need it. Uh, a bucket of, wa of plain water here, uh, just to wash off the back of the mosaic. Lots and lots of paper towels and some old uh, terry cloth towels for buffing. So that's what you're going to need to start to grout. It's important when you mix your grout, I'll show you a, in a video next, um, to do it very slowly. Add the water very slowly. We're going for a consistency of like cookie dough or maybe mashed potatoes. Uh, you don't want your grout to ever be too runny. Before you start grouting though, I'm going to ask you to reserve and set aside, oh, about a tablespoon of black grout. And don't mix it, keep it to the side and keep it dry. And I'll tell you why later why we need to do that. So we're going to get ready to mix the grout. You see I've laid um, some old cardboard down here because it's a pretty messy thing. I've got uh, my six ounces of grout with one teaspoon or tablespoon reserved. And I'm going to add the water a little bit at a time here and um, kind of stir. I'm using an old, um, I save like old cottage cheese and sour cream containers. They're perfect for this because... You can just throw them away, and I hate to waste anything. So I'm stirring a little bit more. Starting to come together. A little bit more water. And I think we may just have it here. Scrape the sides. Make sure and stir from the bottom as well. Once again, this was about six ounces of grout, and it was one and a half ounces of water that I am adding real slowly. And I think we've got what we want here. Let me kind of see, to show you what I have here. It's perfect. Kind of like some soft cookie dough, I think. And 
are going to be ready to grout. So grouting is kind of my favorite part because I call it the big reveal. This is a beautiful mosaic, but once we add the grout to it, and it creates this contrast that it's a wonderful drama. Um, you have this fabulous sponge. On this side, it's grout float, which means that you can use it instead of your fingers if you want to smush that grout in. So this grout will go a long way when you smush it in and smush it around. I find this works really well. Now, I'm kind of used to just using my fingers, but if you don't want to do that with your gloves on, you can... Um, use the grout float as well and you're just going to kind of smush in and smush around there's no particular science to this you can see this grout goes a long way Get it, all the creeks and the crevices. Okay. Now, you've got your sides to do. I want you to smush this grout into the sides. Get it all over the sides of the substrate as well. Um, it will stain the substrate black, which is great. That's exactly what you want it to do. But you want to get it in the sides there so it looks nice and neat on the sides. this side real quick as you can see I'm working pretty fast um, you don't want to go too slowly with the grout because you don't want it to what I call set up on you So I've got my sides finished right here. Good and messy, isn't it? Now I'm getting it all over the back, but that's no big deal. Nobody's going to see the back. I wouldn't worry about that. Okay, so here's your beautiful mess. This is my favorite part. We are not going to use a wet sponge or a damp sponge. You're used to seeing that maybe if a tile setter were to set your backsplash or your floor, but we're not tile setters, we're mosaic artists. So we're going to use what I call the dry method. Lots and lots of paper towels. We're not going to take any water to this. Um, your paper towels are just going to kind of rub in and rub off. Um, no particular method here other than expose all this beautiful glass tessera. It's what I kind of call the big reveal. You're going to do this pretty aggressively. Uh, your adhesive has done a good job. So use your paper towel to sort of dig out some of the grout in places. Some of the tessera, the glass pieces, are higher or lower than others. So you want to make sure you see every beautiful piece of glass. Oh, it's starting to come to life, isn't it? Now remember when you set aside that extra grout, there's a reason for that. Sometimes when you're aggressively shining and cleaning up, a piece will fall off. Uh, it shouldn't, but if it does, the world won't come to an end. What you're going to do is just keep on cleaning and don't pay any attention to that at all. And then when you're all done, we'll address that problem. But I don't want you to slow up on your cleaning the grout. If you find it's starting to what I call set up on you, dry up too quickly, that's why I keep a, a spray bottle here of water, and I just from send it, give it just the tiniest little mist of water, and um, that'll help. So let me get some more clean paper towels. 
Oh, it's so pretty. I'm going to get this damp and I'm going to use it to just clean off the sides. Get those sides all clean and neat. Clean the sides. The back looks pretty nasty too. I really don't care what the back looks like, but you might want to clean that off with your wet sponge. And we are looking good. Wow, look at that. So we're going to let this sit. and let it sit, sit for probably 10 or 15 minutes. And then we're going to kind of get kind of a clean work area here and come back with a um, dry, terry, old terry cloth towel, nasty towel, and give it lots of buffs. Gorgeous. I'm loving it, loving it. So, it looks like we're all done. I went ahead and painted the back and the sides with just regular uh, craft store craft paint. Not expensive paint. Kind of finishes it off pretty. So, it's been a, uh, at least 24 hours. And I have just a spray bottle here with water and some white uh, distilled vinegar. Um, probably uh, four parts water and one part vinegar. Not much. And I'm just going to give it a good spray and get it all wet. The reason we're using the vinegar is if there's any haze left at all on here, the vinegar will neutralize that haze and give it a good cleaning and buffing with your terry cloth towel. And get any of that haze off. If you see any glue that happened to be stuck on the top, that haze, that um, a vinegar water will loosen that a little. You can use your fingernail or a, a toothpick or anything to sort of uh, get that off. It should come off real easily now. And this is gorgeous. Ta-da! I love the way that pearlized glass catches the light. And the glitter glass glitters. And that mirrored triangle shines. Beautiful work.